Hello everyone. So today our topic is about the ozone depletion and the international initiatives related to the ozone depletion control, right? So you might be aware about the ozone, ozone depletion and the process associated with it. Uh, so I'll briefly tell about this, then we'll come to the international initiatives related to the ozone layer depletion, right? So naturally, ozone is present in our uh, stratosphere. You all know that we our Earth atmosphere is divided into number of layers, starting from troposphere, and then we have stratosphere, and then we have uh, mesosphere, right? Then ionosphere, and then exosphere, right? Fine. So that is the structure of our atmosphere. And within our uh, atmosphere, we have uh, the stratosphere layer, the second layer from the uh, bottom. So in that ozone is present and this ozone has the capacity to absorb the ultraviolet rays, right? So as the intensity or the frequency of ultraviolet rays are more in the electromagnetic spectrum, so there uh, the reaching of UV rays into the actual uh, the lower layers of atmosphere or the troposphere will affect our health as well as environment. So this ozone will absorb the UV rays and then the frequency or the intensity of reaching towards uh, to the edge surface or uh, the troposphere is reduced, right? So that is the role of ozone. Fine. Here we have a, a positive role of ozone, but if the same ozone, the O3, if it is present in the lower level of atmosphere, that is uh, troposphere, then it has a capacity to create a smog the air will be stable in that areas and it will lead to pollution and ultimately affect on the human health as well in terms of bronchiosis or lung disease. So there was many studies. If ozone is present in the lower level of atmosphere, then it has a negative impact on uh, human health, right? So the studies across the climate studies in 1970s or the initial uh, phases of uh, uh, 1980s, they have discovered that there is a uh, there is a need that immediately we need to take action to control the ozone layer depletion as well as the presence of ozone in the lower atmosphere. That's why the first initiative of the world has come through Vienna Convention of 1985, right? So this Vienna Convention of 1985 has started the implementation from 1988 and but at the final ratification of all the countries came in 2009. And this is an initiative to control all the causative factors or the compounds or the chemicals which are, are you know, depleting the ozone uh, in the upper uh, stratosphere as well as increasing the uh, presence of ozone in the lower atmosphere. So these include CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, right? And then HCFCs. So here, because of these gases contributing, maybe re releasing from refrigerators and then air coolers, uh, we aimed at removing them. But this is a not a binding treaty. Vienna Convention 1985 is a not a binding treaty. It is just a voluntary in nature, which is guiding, which is actually guiding or uh, giving some, uh, what you call guidelines for the countries to implement. But it is not a mandatory or not even binding on the uh, member nations, right? So that's why the countries have recognized that this is not an efficient approach or an e efficient convention. So in addition, under Vienna Convention itself, they have bought Montreal Protocol, which was signed in Canada in 1987. And it came into the implementation from 1994. So it was a binding in nature. Now the Montreal uh, Protocol ha has implemented in form of a binding in nature that all the countries, including developing countries, as well as developed countries, are mandatorily to be uh, implement the Montreal Protocol to reduce uh, the impact of CFCs, right? So under the Montreal Protocol, there is a deadline also, the initially when it was signed in 1987, that developed countries has to phase out chlorofluorocarbons in 1993, at the year of 1993, which it came into implementation. And they have to achieve 20% reduction related to the 1986. For example, in 1986, there was 100 tons of uh, emission of ozone. So out of that 100 uh, you know, tons, we need to reduce 20%. So the 20 tons has to be reduced by the uh, you know year of, uh, uh, I mean, at the level of 1986, 
the 20 percent has to be achieved reduction has to be achieved by 1994 so by the next one or two years from 1993 to 1994 within one year they have put an uh, deadline for the developing countries they need to reduce 20 percent of these uh, ozone la layer depleting substances that is chlorofluorocarbons and uh, also one more added that in the by year 1998 maybe after four years they have extended right so it, this is an initial agreement uh, initial agreement itself first year they need to reduce 20 percent and by the year of 1998 they have to reduce 50 percent uh, levels of the 1986 right that means 50 tons but 100 tons was the level of ozone 1980s for example so 20 has to be removed at 1994 and 50 percent has to 50 tons has to be removed by 1998 right so it has a put binding on the developed countries of course later the developing countries were excluded initially it was thought that the developing countries are also has to uh you know obtain the targets but later when the year 1993 was started so the developing countries was exempted right so initially it was there for developing countries also but that was removed so if the question comes that it is binding on developing countries so you can take it as a wrong right initially it was but the actual implementation developing countries was excluded right so this is about the montreal protocol fine as we have uh, took the agreement that we need to uh, remove completely of uh, chlorofluorocarbons uh, by the year uh, 1998 50 percent has to be removed but later they have amended there was a london amendment in 1990 1990 and they have kept the target for uh, the developed countries they have to achieve uh the complete removal of chlorofluorocarbons by 2000 itself so by 2000 itself they have amended and they have done that uh it has to be removed completely by 2000 for developed countries and for developing countries they have given a guideline that you also need to try to remove them by 2010 right so a london amendment was added to monitor protocol to eliminate completely the cfcs by developed countries uh by the year of 2000 and for the developing countries, they have given a guideline that they need to remove by 2010, right? In this background, most of the industries, as the countries are willing to eliminate it completely, now they have kept a lot of restriction for the industries also. Most of the industries has shifted towards the hydrofluorocarbons, uh, right? So HFCs, not HCFCs. HCFCs are ozone depleting. H HFCs are not ozone depleting right in the exam if they are asking hfcs are not ozone depleting so they the industries has shifted from cfcs and hcfcs to hfcs hydrofluorocarbons so after few years it was recognized that hfcs though are not the uh, ozone depleting substances but they are greenhouse gas uh, gases that means they are capturing heat and remaining the heat in the lower level of atmosphere so it is the amount of heat is increasing so they have recognized that hfcs has the effect of uh, global uh, warming so that's why in 2000 uh you know uh 2020 i guess yes so in in the year of 2000 not even 20 it is in the year of 2017 yes so in the year of 2017 they have met at kigali at rwanda country so kigali is the capital of rwanda they have signed a new convention or the new agreement amendment kigali amendment which was done to the montreal protocol montreal protocol is to eliminate the ozone layer depletion substances that is cfcs and hcfcs and kigali amendment was made in 2017 that we need to eliminate the hfcs also hydrofluorocarbons so the target is for all equally for developing countries as well as developed countries it is a binding in nature by 2045 it aims to uh, reduce 80 to 85 percent compared to the base level so when we started calculating the hfcs from that year by 2045 we need to eliminate at least 80 to 85 percent of hydrofluorocarbons right so this is the recent amendment made to the montreal protocol right so this is about the initiatives under the ozone layer depletion and the mechanism of ozone layer depletion and the substances which are contributing uh, for the ozone layer depletion and the initiatives taken at the global level. So you need to understand Vienna Convention, which is a voluntary in nature, 
just giving guidelines and Montreal protocol they have given binding uh, guidelines for the developed countries and developing countries are just voluntary they need to take and then Kigali amendment was made in 2017 to eliminate the hydro uh, fluorocarbons not HCFCs HCFCs are ozone depletion so HFCs are also aimed to remove by 2045 by at least 80 to 85 percent so this is the initiatives taken to uh, eliminate the ozone uh, at the ground level and also to reduce the ozone layer depletion in the stratosphere right so this is a very important it's been asked in many times in prelims as well as uh, mains also in 2022 right so this is about the ozone layer in uh, protection initiatives thank you